हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लुकिंग एट करंट अफेयर्स फॉर ट्वेंटी एट में द न्यूज आइटम्स पिक द फ्रॉम द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर आर दीज टेन वी लुक एट दम इन डिटेल द फर्स्ट वन नाउ ट्रम्प ऑफर्स टू मीडिएट बिटवीन इंडिया एंड चाइना सो यू एस प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प एज सेट दैट ही हैज ऑफर्ड to help new delhi and beijing resolve their tensions at the lac line of actual control so we have been seeing the situation flaring up chinese minister of foreign affairs had given uh, statements that india is encroaching and uh, uh, changing the status quo but now chinese ministry has also minister of foreign affairs has also softened its line on the standoff and suggested that the situation was stable and controllable so with this face off which took place at at least four points along the line of actual control includes Pangong So Lake in Ladakh, Nimchok and Galwan Valley in Ladakh as well, and Nakula in Sikkim. But now the situation it is seen is controllable. It uh, actually People's Liberation Army, that is Chinese soldiers, were reported to have occupied tracts patrolled by Indian troops and had their tents pitched in there. They were building trenches there. But the Minister of External Affairs, as such, Indian Minister of External Affairs has not given any statements. And on President Trump's uh, uh, offer to mediate, there has been no response from either India nor China. India in the past has also rejected all such third-party mediation offers. Uh, uh, earlier in the year, also uh, last year in 2019, also President Trump had offered to mediate between India and Pakistan on Kashmir issue, but India rejected that the issue would be resolved bilaterally. Then next is government removes four thousand five hundred rupees ceiling on COVID nineteen tests. So Indian Council of Medical Research has written to all states and union territories, suggesting that the upper ceiling of rupees four thousand five hundred for RT PCR, that is reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test for COVID nineteen, has been removed. So this will be removed so that they can negotiate with approved laboratories to introduce cheaper tests also. But then you should remember that this was the upper ceiling. Means, of course, the test could have been at a lower price. This is the maximum that the laboratories could charge for. But now, to have cheaper rates, the reason why this uh, ceiling has been removed is to be understood. So, Health Ministry also said that uh, critical services for women, children, and adults should be provided irrespective of their COVID-19 status, and under no circumstances they should be denied essential services. so this is regarding because other uh, services uh, other health requirements are already there like uh, you know pregnant women would be on reproduction maternal newborn child adolescent health nutrition these services should continue so for that uh, guidelines have been given by ministry of health that if an area is a, you know in con- is a containment area or a buffer zone then they can start these activities after a minimum gap of 14 days following delisting so after delisting they can start after gap of 14 days uh, these health services and if the area is uh, entering containment or buffer zone then these activities should be restricted immediately and listed protocol has to be followed so this is the detail so here you can see this is the graph showing the number of new covid 19 cases how they have witnessed a drop on monday and tuesday in the last two days so the number of tests conducted have also been significantly lower however so that is shown here you can see the new cases and new tests then next is despite lockdown wheat procurement on target so on the back of a record wheat harvest of more than 1071 lakh tons procurement of grains has also crossed the 2019 levels so despite lockdown procurement is taking place the target for procurement is of 407 lakh tons means government procures these wheat from the farmers so out of 1071 lakh tons government procures 407 lakh tons and this is mainly uh, led by food corporation of india so this procurement is done at msp minimum support price set by the center each year and uh, so you can see it is around 1/3 little over 1/3 is procured and this goes to the central pool of subsidized uh, sub- central pool as such which is used for subsidized distribution under the national food security act so under the public distribution system pds so this procurement is taking place and has crossed 2019 levels despite lockdown but there is unevenness among states like punjab and haryana are reaching towards their targets of procurement while in uttar pradesh the target is lagging behind the pradesh has reached less than 40% of its target that is it has procured only less than 40% madhya pradesh has already crossed its target 
So wheat production has also been at record high for fourth straight year. Last year also there was excess rainfall during 2019 monsoon, and also the long winter provided climatic conditions which were conducive for wheat production. So this is the harvest and procurement of wheat, which is being shown here. The total harvest and current procurement compared to last year's procurement, you can see, is shown here. The next is after Twitter fact check, Trump threatens to shut social media. So, U.S. President Donald Trump threatened to strongly regulate or shut down social media platforms after Twitter identified two of his tweets as making unsubstantiated claims. So, in this is the, for the first time that Twitter has posted a fact check below two of Trump's tweets, and these were tweets about mail-in ballots. So, he had uh, uh, mailed about how mail-in uh, mail ballots. Yeah, if they take root in the country, then they would, uh, you know, they would be actually free for all on cheating, forgery, and ballot thefts would take place. And he said whoever cheated would win. So there was a fact check which was posted by Twitter below this uh, tweet of President Trump. So President Trump, he has been using Twitter. He, he posts on the site several times a day to communicate with more than 80 million followers which he has on Twitter. And now U.S. is months away from general election and President Trump has now threatened to strongly regulate or shut down the social media platforms because tweet ident Twitter identified two of his tweets making unsubstantiated claims. So this fact checking has been threatened and U.S. Tr tr President Trump calls Twitter as, uh, says that Twitter is interfering in the 2020 elections and stifling free speech, free speech of the president. And he said he will not allow it to happen. But Twitter, you should know, Twitter had in 2019 also stopped permitting political ads. It says it will not permit political ads because political message reach should be earned, not bought. Then next is U.S. strips Hong Kong of special trading status. So U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has declared that Hong Kong will no longer enjoy the autonomy promised as such, uh, which U.S. has promised to Beijing. The, and it be stripped as such of the special status under the U.S. law. So he gave a statement that Hong Kong does not continue to warrant treatment under U.S. laws in the same manner as U.S. laws were applied to Hong Kong before July 1997. So it was in 1997 that Hong Kong was handed over by British to the Chinese authorities. So earlier it was a colony of Britishers. So there was a law passed in 2019 also by U.S. Congress, which was aimed at supporting Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. And the administration had to certify that the territory is still autonomous to enjoy its separate uh, special status with U.S. for trading purposes. So this law had already been passed and now U.S. Secretary of State has declared that it will not enjoy the autonomy promise. And this is in the context of the law which has been proposed to be passed by China for Hong Kong. So what is this law is given here, you can see. Hong Kong body will play an advisory role. So what is this law all about? It is a security law as it is being stated. It is a proposed law that would allow Chinese mainland authorities to set up shop in Hong Kong. Means they will be able to uh, you know, look into uh, security related issues in Hong Kong. So their powers presently will be, it is expected once provided will be restricted to intelligence gathering and will be an, advise, uh, an, an advisory role as such. But uh, still the pro-democracy protesters have been up in arms against it. Hong Kong actually has its own legal system. And uh, the autonomy is ensured under the one country, two systems arrangement which has been in place, place since Britain handed Hong Kong back to China in 1997. So Hong Kong has its own mini constitution. And the local police under it is responsible for law enforcement. But mainland police, that is Chinese police officials, mainland China police officials are allowed to operate within the territory. But now with this new security law, the activists, pro-democracy activists fear that uh, the, this firewall which is there between what is uh, what is the responsibility of the local police and when uh, mainland police officials can operate. So this will be diluted, this will be affected. So this that is why. Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters are again presently protesting against this security law which China is pushing for. Also, the security law has to be passed by Hong Kong legislature and if it fails to, then China will step in. On the, context, on the pretext that it is, to be, uh, it is uh, responsible for uh, you know, external affairs and security related issues. 
also in 2019 there were mass unrest against the proposal which was there which has now been scrapped which would allow extradition to mainland china of hong kong citizens so this was protested against and it had to be withdrawn and now after those protests the chinese government accuses hong kong of being supported by external forces to protest against mainland chinese authorities and to ensure that terrorism is tackled this new security law is being proposed by china the next is france to stop use of hydroxychloroquine for covid-19 treatment so france italy and belgium have acted to halt the use of hydroxychloroquine to treat patients suffering from covid-19 because questions have been raised about the safety of this generic anti malarial drug it's a generic drug it the drug it does not cost high and has been showing positive responses but considering the safety concerns which are there because it has side effects which are not generally seen but the world health organization had raised concerns about it and now european countries like france italy belgium they have cancelled the decree france has cancelled a decree which was allowing hospital doctors to dispense the medicine so it has suspended authorization to use hydroxychloroquine for covid-19 outside clinical trials means clinical trials can continue other uses will be stopped so these are the three countries france italy and belgium which are the hardest hit by corona virus infections and deaths have been high here too and now world health organization decision to pause a large trial of hydroxychloroquine due to safety concerns is uh, seeing these countries also banning it but world health organization actually stopped the trial also so in under world health organization solidarity trial is taking place on four candidate drugs as such for covid-19 and one of them was hydroxychloroquine and uh, world health organization announced pause on this trial of hydroxychloroquine while france as such has uh, said that clinical trials would continue but otherwise it should not be used for on patients the next is eu unveils sent 750 euro billion euro economy rescue plan so this is european union's executive which has unveiled a 750 billion euro plan to prop up economies hammered by corona virus crisis so this is we have seen many european countries like italy and spain they are the worst affected countries due to the pandemic and uh, they are going to be affected and if these countries get affected then european union as such would also be affected the common market and the euro the currency common currency would also be affected so that is why european union executive has unveiled this 750 billion euro plan so uh, no actually this will be used to assist these countries it is said two third of the grant two third of it will be grant and rest will be in loans and from where this money will come european commission would borrow these funds from the market and then disperse them to various countries but then the northern nations actually are more frugal and they are against such steps of assisting other countries because they themselves are also affected so through such grants being given is that so but the european union leaders are saying that uh, this step needs to be taken otherwise there will be something worse than this divisive debt crisis which would come so there was such a crisis earlier to a decade ago and this has resulted that has resulted into the 2008 financial crisis so that's over a decade ago now so at that time also euro skepticism was high and uh, eurozone was threatened to be pulled apart too. but that uh, that as such has passed now and now another crisis has emerged in the name of covid-19 so the fiscally conservative northern countries resist this pressure from other groups in the european union which are looking for a mutual debt so when european union is taking a debt means all countries together are taking a debt from the market they are borrowing funds from the market so they don't want to take this risk but uh, to save the countries which are severely been affected this step is said to be essential so european union single market comprises of around 450 million people so how, whether they go together or they part ways is, is the option as such it is said so the grants all the controversial are needed and these countries which are being which will be provided with these grants like italy spain greece france and portugal already have high debt and they rely on heavily on tourism and tourism is halted at the time of pandemic so the economy is severely stressed and they need assistance so this is that not netherland it is said is to be amongst the most resistant of the of the countries in european union against this mutualized debt and grants 
and has responded cautiously to the proposal. However, this proposal has to be approved by all 27 member states and the European Parliament. The executive has proposed it and now it has to be approved by all 27 members and the Parliament. So then it will be put into effect and borrowing will ultimately have to be repaired too. Means there will be higher national contributions to the European Union budget in the future or uh, there will be new taxes assigned as such to get this amount to be repaid. And this amount which we uh, read of see uh, 750 billion euros is over and above the 1.1 trillion euros which have been proposed by the European Union Commission under its long term budget for 2021 to 2027. So this is the next is loans to micro small and medium enterprises may get risk free tax. So, RBI is likely to allow banks to assign zero risk weight to loans that will be extended to micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs. So, there is this 20 lakh crore economic package which the Prime Minister had announced, Atmanirbhar Bharat Yojana. So, under this package, 3 lakh crores is for micro, small and medium enterprises sector and this amount is being guaranteed by National Credit Guarantee Trustee Company Limited in the form of Guaranteed Emergency Credit Line Facility. But such loans attract a risk weight because they are not directly guaranteed by the government. We had discussed this when we had discussed the first tranche of Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme. So, uh, they are not directly guaranteed by the government. So, there is a risk weight which has to be attached of a minimum 20 percent. But uh, uh, now, finance minister has requested RBI to look into this matter and drop this so that there will be zero risk weight for loans. So, that is there. So, even presently also when micro, small and medium enterprises, micro and small enterprises are given uh, guaranteed by credit guarantee fund trust, then they have to make, the banks have to make a risk weight of minimum 20 percent attached to it. Zero risk would mean that banks will not have to set aside additional capital for these loans. So, then it will be more favorable for them to provide loans to micro, small and medium enterprises. Finance Minister has also met chief executives of public sector banks and have asked them to extend loans automatically to eligible borrowers without fearing the three C's that is the CVC, CBI and the CAG. So, this is there. And the loans which will be provided to micro, small and medium enterprises under this scheme will be for four years. And the moratorium period of one year will be there on the principal amount too. And there will be no guarantee fee charged as such. Interest rate under the scheme is 9.25% when loan is extended by bank and financial institutions and 14 percent if it is by non-banking finance companies. So, this is the 3 lakh crore loan guarantee scheme. Then next is the last news, Google faces antitrust case in India. So, Competition Commission of India is looking into allegations that Alphabet Inc's Google that is the parent company Alphabet Inc. Google is abusing its market position to unfairly promote its mobile payment app, the GPay app in the country. So, this complaint has been filed in Feb 2020 at the Competition Commission of India, but the identity of the complainant has been kept confidential. So, the complaint alleges that US tech giant Google gets uh, more prominently showcases its Google Pay app inside its Android app store in India. So, it gives an unfair advantage to over other apps of competitors and this also hurts consumers is what is complaint says. So, this is said to be Google's third major antitrust challenge in India. Earlier two challenges were in 2018 and 2019. The 2018 case resulted in Competition Commission of India fining Google 21 million dollars for search bias. But company has made an appeal against this and that appeal is pending now. In 2019, Competition Commission of India started investigating uh, alleged misuse of uh, dominant position by Google to reduce the ability of smartphone manufacturers to opt for alternative versions of Android mobile operating system. So, Android mobile operating system also belongs to Google. So, on that also there was a case in 2019 file which is still continuing, has been investigated and now the Google Pay app is also being challenged. So, this is a third antitrust challenge against Google in India. Such challenges have been seen in various other countries too, foreign countries too, western countries. And other mobile uh, payment apps which are there are Paytm which belongs, which is funded by SoftBank and of China. Then Walmart's PhonePay and Facebook's WhatsApp is also planning to have a similar mobile payment app too. 
so these are competitors of google pay so this is regarding the complaint before competition commission of india that search engine is abusing its dominant position in online searches too so on that it had resulted in the ruling asking google to pay fine so similar you can see it has faced similar setbacks in european union and russia too. so these were the allegations the charges that restrictive clauses in search intermediation pacts between google's partners from using similar services from competing search engines so there are restrictive clauses uh, as such which google has and google was accused of manipulating search results to the advantage of its vertical partners and google's own sites would appear prominently in search results irrespective of whether they were popular or relevant sites so that was and regarding competition commission of india you should know it has been established under competition act of 2002 and the act was enacted in 2003 but uh, the body could start functioning only in 2013 so 2009 it was fully constituted so this was because of legal challenges and then the amendment had to be passed so this this competition commission of india what is its responsibility eliminating practices having adverse effect on competition promoting and sustaining competition and protecting the interests of the consumers so ensuring freedom of trade as such and it is a successor body to mrtp act uh, that is restrictive trade practices monopolies and restrictive trade practices commission so that has been replaced by competition commission of india so that is it thank you